There are a lot of different things to consider as you're building a data model, but one of the most foundational things is establishing relationships between your tables. Otherwise, you don't really have a model, you just have a bunch of disconnected tables. But how you actually go about joining those tables can really determine how successful your model is and how well it can scale. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what's known as a surrogate key. We'll talk about what they are, why they're important, and why you might wanna consider using them for your own modeling if you haven't already. So first of all, let's establish what is a surrogate key. So a surrogate key is a replacement key. I think that's surrogate for a primary key in a table. It's something that you as a data team are creating to act as the unique identifier for a table. This is something that doesn't exist anywhere in real life. It's not in any source system. It's not in any business application. It's really just something that you create internally for your modeling purposes. One of the main benefits is it gives you and your data team control over the modeling because as engineers, we are dealing with so much data that's coming in from all these different systems, trying to connect them into some sort of model internally by establishing a surrogate key and the logic behind what is a unique record in a table. It gives you more control over how the table looks, what's considered a unique identifier in the table, no matter what the source system says. And then when you get to the point of creating relationships, you can use these surrogate keys and know exactly what they mean, rather than hoping that the source systems or the different systems all play nicely together. Now, some teams don't use surrogate keys and instead they'll just use a natural key from a source system table. So maybe there's an ID already available and you've created a model perfectly around that. That's possible. You can do that. I'm going to give you a few reasons here why you might want to still consider using it, even if that already exists. There are a lot of ways you could technically create a surrogate key, but a common way to do this is just to create a hashed key. A lot of databases nowadays, they come in with built-in hashing functions that you just pass in a bunch of columns. This again, gives you control as a data team to decide and establish what are considered the unique records. Maybe it's not an ID. Maybe it's a combination of columns. You could just pass those in and it'll give you a hashed value. But now let's talk about why you would even want to consider doing this in the first place. Number one to me is consistency because by using surrogate keys and basically deciding that this is gonna be the way you do it in every table, that means that all of your tables are gonna look the same. They're gonna have the same general structure. All of them will have some sort of SK column as the unique identifier for the table. Let's take a scenario where you have one table that has a truly unique ID in the source. Maybe there's just a clear ID that you could use, but then you have another dimension table that's combining sources from multiple systems. And there isn't a really true single column that you could use, but you know that a combination of columns would represent a unique key. If you didn't consistently use that surrogate key concept, you might have one table that uses just a pure ID, and then you have another table that has maybe a surrogate key. Technically, it would work, but it's going to create this mixture of what tables look like, how the underlying joins are going to function, different conversations you're going to have with your team, as opposed to just establishing that every table uses a surrogate key, whether you have it or not, even if it's just hashing one column, it'll give you a consistent look and feel for all of your tables and make your modeling cleaner and easier easier to work with. Number two is it's going to ensure uniqueness in your tables. Like we just mentioned, it's possible that some tables already have a unique value. But again, bringing it back to this control idea, the surrogate key, you are establishing it as a data team. So you get to decide what that unique value is, and you can understand what that logic is supposed to be rather than always relying on the source systems to be upholding referential integrity, which is not always the case. You hope it is, but this is going to give you more control. You can then very easily run tests on that surrogate key to ensure there are no duplicates that none of them are null, because if they are, for whatever reason, that would mean something's wrong. This is also gonna become really helpful if you have slowly changing dimensions, because as we mentioned, the idea of this hash function in general deals with a combination of columns. And when you have a slowly changing dimension, anytime an individual column changes, you want to essentially track the history of that. So again, imagine a value changes, it's supposed to generate a new row in the slowly changing dimension. If you align those columns with your surrogate key, it'll automatically also create that new key for you so it aligns very easily with it and you can use that value to stamp it in your fact table so it's really easy in the future then to know exactly which record is tied to let's say a fact table in this case even if it changes slowly over time because there's only ever going to be one surrogate key for any record because of the way it all works and all this leads to the third point which is simplicity when you're able to stamp a surrogate key value in a fact table when you get to the third layer let's call it the marts layer you know that you can very easily join in a dimension by just looking at the surrogate key join you don't have to do a lot of complicated things to figure out which value was available during a certain date. It's already established. You've already done the hard thinking and the logic of the join inside the fact table. For example, maybe there is a unique ID or maybe it's a combination of columns. Maybe you need to figure out if it's active. That's all determined. And from there, once you figure that out, you then stamp the surrogate key, which you can then reference later on. So it might be challenging in the sense of trying to think through this, but that's really where the value is from a data modeling and data engineering perspective. Once 
once you get that established, it is simple to join things later on. It's simple to follow because every table has this surrogate key. It's simple to test because you have a unique value that you can look at and there's always going to be more to do. But now that you understand this, think about the difference between that and leaving yourself open to trying to mix and match the different unique identifiers across all the source systems that you would have to do if you didn't have a surrogate key concept in place. The last thing I want to mention here has to do with surrogate keys in a fact table. Generally speaking, a dimension table is a great candidate for a surrogate key, but a fact table, you could debate whether or not you actually need that. So in the purest form, let's say of a star schema, a fact table, it's representing some sort of unique granular action and the combination of all of the dimensions that are joining it inherently make it unique. So in theory, you wouldn't need any sort of key if you're in a pure sense. For me, I just like to keep things consistent. I like to have a little more control. So I will still create a surrogate key in a fact table so that I can do quick tests, just overall have a similar look and feel to all my tables. That's optional. You don't have to do that. But for me, that's something I like to do. So if you want to continue to talk more about this kind of thing or learn from other people building and designing things this way, come check out the Modern Data Community. It's completely free. I'll have a link in the description below or just go to moderndatacommunity.com. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.